it's time for the Supreme Award, and I'm going to say the name first and the story later. So I ask the person, would they please stay seated? Well, tonight, the Benny Award goes out the long deliberation to someone we've all enjoyed and admired for years, and we were at risk of taking for granted until we start, sat down and started reckoning up what this person has achieved and what they've given back. It's an artist who's had various awards from the Queen, from us, from other entertainment groups, but tonight it's the big one. The Variety Artist Mini Award 2009 goes to Mr. Eddie Lowe. Yes! was at the Blind Institute in Auckland and he had music coaching from Ty Paul, father of Rim D. And young Eddie was impressively proficient. He played piano, fiddle, guitar, flute, trumpet and violin. And plus, of course, he has a magic golden singing voice. Now, when they were in their late teens, Eddie and a friend set out from Melbourne to seek work as entertainers. They could both sing and they happened to have um, matching jackets. So they offered themselves together to perform as a duo. But the only jobs they got, they were so skint, they had to walk to any wig that gig that would have them, and they got paid $10 per performance, which was $5 each. But that all changed. The friend went to England to start a solo career. His name was John Rolls. And Eddie joined a band called the Quintickies. Now, the Quintickies became one of the most famous and successful of the show bands. They performed to public acclaim for years and earned just a little bit more than five dollars each. As part of the Quintickies, Eddie um, performed in the movie Don't Let It Get You with Kiwi Tikanawa. Ever since, Eddie's been waiting for his damehood. <laughs> it, it didn't happen, Eddie, but we're doing our best. And the Benny is just as good. Yeah. I've always, it's intrigued me, and perhaps Eddie will explain later, that one of his colleagues in the Quintiki was called, wait for this, Weasel Tyra. Now there has to be a reason, and Eddie will know it. Now, that golden voice, with or without Dave Perry, it enthused live audiences, but also listening audiences, because he has recorded, amazingly, 150 songs. And that's solos, not counting duets with John Grinnell. What audiences sometimes don't know is how supportive Eddie has been to people less fortunate. His work for charities is prolific, and one of its main outlets, of course, is uh, supportive work for the blind. We tend to think of golf as a pleasure, but Eddie has made it a labour of love. He plays frequent matches and tournaments, not just for the fun, but as fundraising for blind children. He's an expert at both the game and the fundraising. He represented New Zealand in the Australian fundraising matches for the blind, went on to win the champion of Queensland, a New Zealander beat the Queensland champion, and he travelled to play in the World Blind Tournament in Ireland. And this is all to fundraise for less fortunate children. his prowess of golf, it's possible that there might be some confusion occasionally with Eddie and another sportsman, an upcoming basketball player. But that is solved quite simply by looking at the team. It's the Auckland Chinese basketball team. Stan Wong, Colin Chan, Eddie Lowe. <laughs> it's a different person. <laughs> I mentioned that Eddie has recorded 150 songs, and among them, one of his most popular hits, Untouchable Lady, plus a variety of the big songs that need the big voice to sing them. Oh, Mine Papa, The Loveliest Night of the Year, The Impossible Dream, and You'll Never Walk Alone. Mm. Plus, as you now know, he composed and wrote the song we heard, I Am Me, especially aimed at reaching out and encouraging children who were having difficulties. There's an odd occasion where he records a song that he's having a bit of a joke. Look around and you'll find a recording by Eddie Lowe called I'm going to hire a wino to decorate the home. <laughs> but in 
contrast is the occasional sweet, sympathetic, I'll take you home again, Kathleen. So really he hasn't been idle, either in entertaining or in giving support to the communities around him. Variety artists awarded him an Honour of Scroll in 1984. The Queen awarded him the New Zealand Order of Merit in 2006. And this year, he was a big winner at the National Country Music Awards. Among these recordings, there was another unusual song, inspired either by a nobility of spirit, or perhaps because he doesn't see too well. It's called, I Never Went to Bed with an Ugly Woman. <laughs> <laughs> The second line is, but I sure woke up with one or two. <laughs> <laughs> the Variety Artist Club firmly believes that Eddie has nobility of spirit. Please welcome the 2009 Benny, a gentleman of music, Mr. Eddie Love. Thank you very much, Max. What a pleasure to see you again, sir. And what an honor this is. I didn't, I did, you know, they said, I'm going to come to Auckland, I'm going to sing two songs. I said, well, what? <laughs> I, was, I could have been mowing my lawns. <laughs> and i got a next door neighbour who comes to check because all of my rows go through this. <laughs> but, oh, Max has uh, reminded me of some things I've forgotten I've done. But uh, it's all been a pleasure and... Uh, the, the most amazing thing is that uh, we do what we do and you sort of don't think that somewhere somebody's taking notice. <laughs> and that's, that's always been good and um, as I said, I started my um, music career at the Foundation for the Blind in Parnell. I started my first group there when I was 13. I had a group called the Three Blind Mice. <laughs> We used to, we used to um, give, uh, play at a uh, different hotel, um, beer garden type things like uh, the Kyle Isles or something, if they were playing somewhere, we would take over when they had their break and just play 10 or 15 minutes. And So it really started from there and uh, who, who would have thought that uh, at this stage in my life, something like this would be happening. Thank you so much. It's a little unnecessary to do a big build-up because everybody in this room knows everybody else. So what I shall do is simply tell you the answer and then do the build-up. Now, <laughs> <laughs> the Benny Award statuette, which I'm in the happy position of knowing, is exactly 12 inches high. And the award winner tonight stands only slightly higher than that statue. <laughs> A journalist once wrote of her, she is the size of a small pretty lampshade but with a voice with the power of the national power grid. And her name is Suzanne Lynch. <laughs> sufficient courage to walk up to the front veranda of the star guitarist Peter Poser and they asked for his autograph. Now Peter, Peter Poser is a notably affable note and he said, okay, I'll sign if you sing a song. So they did. And Peter Poser looked at Ron Dalton who was sitting there and they both thought that's good enough to record. Now that the eventual result of that veranda audition was a singing career which led to stardom, recordings, countless television appearances and world travel. After a few years, the, the sisters went solo, and Suzanne became New Zealand Entertainer of the Year in 1970. Now, besides television concerts, touring, etc., only once, as far as I know, did Sue venture into musical theatre, and she appeared in a comedy review with me. 
And there was one very brief item we did which remains firmly in my mind. I kind of expect Sue to remember it after all these years, so I'll play both parts. <laughs> it was a brief conversation between an elephant and a mouse. <laughs> I'll leave you to guess who played which. <laughs> Said the mouse to the elephant, you're so tall. Said the elephant, you're so small. Said the mouse to the elephant, yes I know, I've not been well at all. <laughs> to live in London for several years, Suzanne joined a girl group and they acquired the craft and the skill of being expert and very much in demand backing vocalists. One of her most memorable gigs was to travel to Paris with a vocal group for a concert in a huge prestigious theatre and when they arrived there was an enormous queue of mainly women right around the building and Sue wondered why, because the singer that they were backing was, was um, far from handsome, and he, he was sprawny, and he was also getting rather old. And she was told, oh no, 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 that is one of the great sex symbols of Europe, that is Charles Aznavour. <laughs> and it's to realise that having been brought up in New Zealand, she thought all sex symbols looked like Daniel Carter, which wasn't necessarily <laughs> the case. <laughs> now, so, has a person who has recorded for Ringo Starr, she's sung backing for Cleo Lane, for Olivia Newton-John, for Neil Sagartner, she has her own publishing company, she vocal coach for New Zealand Idol, and she still sings with the power of the national group. Not long ago she said, I intend to keep on working until I'm exactly 90, like the Queen Mother. <laughs> well, she's not there yet, but she is here. All the way from Peter Poser's Brenda to the 2008 Benny Award, here is New Zealand's prettiest singing lampshade, <laughs> Susan Lynch. <laughs> Mouse, actually, Max, I do remember that. My one and only venture into musical theatre. Well, goodness me, I'm absolutely speechless. I was not expecting this. Um, I'd just like to thank the VAC. Thank you so much, you guys. It's wonderful to be honoured by your peers. And it's a very special family we have here tonight for me because I've got some of my oldest and dearest musical friends here. And uh, that's very special to me to have everyone in the same room, as I said earlier. And it's been a long way, a long journey from that veranda at Peter Post's house. I'm very glad when we asked him for his autograph, he said, not unless you sing a song, and I'll never forget that phrase either. 